our co-founder Luke Souls started this sort of tradition of beating the rest of the crowd by flying to Australia for the iPhone 3GS. And ever since then, iFixit has been sending someone around the globe for all of the new releases of really important things. Planning for teardowns is always really tough. Uh, it's usually super last minute. We watch like the big press release thing for the, the iPhone or the Apple Watch or whatever, and that will tell us when the pre-order date is, and that helps us decide how and where we're gonna fly and what we're gonna do. I'm Andrew Goldberg, Teardown Engineer for iFixit. I'm Samantha Lionheart. I do most of the teardown photography for the big teardowns and the guides. We're in Australia, which is 17 hours ahead of our home offices in Slow. Yeah, the flight itself is 15 hours, and you're traveling forward in time to Australia, so you lose two days just in the flying time. We are here to be the first people to take apart the 6S and the 6S Plus. We'll actually have the phone here and be taking it apart and be totally finished with it before it releases um, back home. And then we'll also rate it for repairability, which means that we'll figure out just by taking it apart how hard it is to take out something and replace it, how hard it's going to be to fix things. So you can get, a, get an idea before you buy it how expensive or how hard it's going to be to fix when it eventually breaks. So working with people back home from Australia is kind of crazy. It sucks for them because they're working until like four or five in the morning um, when it's just kind of like the late afternoon for us by the time we're done. Um, but we're all in one chat room, so we try and coordinate all the text that's going in there. And by the time the teardown is live, um, we have to be really meticulous about what text goes into the teardown because it's going to be seen by millions of people. Um, and sometimes we also have translators who are coming in, so we have to coordinate with them and find out like the best translations for things and make sure that we're not stepping on each other's toes making edits. Yeah, one of the big issues working with the team back home is that here in Australia or sometimes in New Zealand, the internet is a lot slower and we're the source of the content. We're taking the pictures and uploading them. So that means that everyone else is waiting on us to get the pictures up there so they can start their analysis and start writing the text about it. And so that actually adds a little bit more pressure as we're taking things apart. We've got to be even faster and make sure we do it right the first time. Especially because if we're taking pictures and then moving on and then the team finds something wrong or something that they want another picture of, it can be really hard to go back because I may be an half an hour or an hour ahead of where the actual pictures in the teardown are. Yeah, totally. There's also kind of the lag between like taking photos and editing the photos, so it's not just like an upload speed thing, because when we take the photos, I still have to do the photoshopping. So I'll be like 10 or 20 photos behind even um, of the actual like teardown timeline. So what's on the website isn't actually where Andrew is, he's way ahead. Um, so if we do miss something, then it's kind of hard to go back. Especially since we're doing two teardowns now of like the 6S and the 6S Plus. So we're just me like powering through both teardowns. Yeah. So actually, three years ago, uh, I flew out to New Zealand with Luke, our co-founder, to do the first teardown of the iPad Mini. And we ended up getting scooped by our own team back home in California. So after all the hours of flying and travel and stress and getting a hotel and getting everything set up, we ended up sitting in our hotel room working on text from New Zealand while the rest of the team was doing the teardown back home. Yeah, it definitely sucks to be scooped, but that was kind of like a while ago. And nowadays, I think it has a pretty big presence online. So even if we are scooped, um, sometimes we still end up getting like really great traffic. So sometimes getting the device can be pretty hard, a bit of a challenge. Uh, certainly last year for the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus, we staked a lot on getting the 6 Plus early, but we didn't have a pre-order reservation for that. So we waited in line at the Apple Store, I think about 20 hours. I think that Apple Store had about 40 iPhone 6 Pluses in stock Maybe. for walk-ups. And every person in front of us bought one because it was the big hot thing. Mm -hmm. And Sam had to actually find a guy who managed to get two and buy one off of him for a bit extra, which pretty much saved our day. Most people know about us from our teardowns, but we're also a free online repair manual for basically everything. We're gonna be some of the first people who do the repair guides um, at all. Most devices don't even come with repair manuals except for you know just a few manufacturers. Um, so we have like free repair guides, free consumer information as far as like what's repairable, um, and also for people who just want to know what the newest technology is, we're a great resource for that. Um, and it's online and it's totally free and we just want people to be able to have their devices last longer. And if your device lasts longer, then it's not going into the landfill, it's going to someone else who needs it or it's lasting longer in your pocket. I think its mission is to write the repair manual to fix everything in the world. And if doing that means flying 17 hours into the future to do a teardown, then that's what we're going to keep on doing. <laughs>